We knew the Reds were probably going to be sellers come the trade deadline, and they've been moving a lot of parts today. We check in with Jeff Carr from Locked On Reds. First, we got to talk Tyler Malley because obviously he's been great for you guys, and now he's headed to his new home in Minnesota. So what was your initial thoughts of the deal, and what are the Twins getting? Yeah, it's really kind of the final piece of the pitching puzzle from a couple of years ago that the Reds had such a great rotation, and they've sent him away. They traded away Sonny Gray this past offseason. They just traded Luis Castillo to the Mariners, and now they're reuniting Sonny Gray and Tyler Malley as they send him to the Twins. Uh, It's really kind of bittersweet because we knew that this was going to be the stated goal of the front office during the trade deadline to add top-flight talent that's coming up through the minor leagues different prospects guys that the reds can build around for the next couple of years but when you look at tyler malley he has been an awesome pitcher for the reds came up at a time when the rebuild if you want to call it that was really flailing for the red legs because from 2015 through 2019 they were rebuilding and you wait on us. We'll get there. We're, we're almost there. And Tyler Malley was kind of the signal that the rebuild was coming to a close. Now the Reds have signaled another, hopefully shorter rebuild by trading him away. But yeah, it's one of those that I am excited about the guys that get back, but I will miss Tyler Malley pitching on the mound for the red legs. You feel like it was kind of, it had to be done at this point. Like he just needed to move on and, and they weren't going to be able to keep him long-term. So try to make the best of the situation. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's something that the reds kind of stated coming into this year, they were going to operate more like the Tampa Bay Rays. No real big contracts. You're, you're trading guys when they have multiple years of control so that you can get the best prospect talent back and Maui had performed well enough over the last couple of years that I think he almost priced himself out of the Reds. Uh, they weren't going to give him $20 million a year, and that's about what Joe Musgrove just got from the Padres a few years ago. Joe Musgrove and Tyler Maui comparable. Musgrove's a little bit better, but you're still probably talking about, I don't know, 15 or $18 million a year for Tyler Malley for a team that doesn't really want to have too many types of contracts like that. So they flip him for the twins. I I think that this is just part of more of what the Reds needed to do. And I like the talent that they've got back. I can't say that I know them implicitly, but based on what I've read about Spencer Steer and Christian Encarnacion Strand, I think that they are going to be huge pieces for this Reds infield, something that the Reds are really looking to contend in two to three years, I, I kind of have 2024 earmarked as when mm-hmm. we're going to see them and talk about them as a playoff hopeful. And Spencer Steer and Encarnacion Strain kind of work for that timeline. And since the Reds weren't going to sign him, he was controlled through next year, they absolutely had to get the most for them. And I think that Nick Crawl has done a good job of that. Brandon Drury on the move as well. He's headed to the Padres. Was that another, they just kind of got to get the best for this, what they can get at this point? Yeah, he was an important one because he was signed on a one-year deal, uh, 900000 I believe. It's not even league minimum. It's a little bit over league minimum. But still, it's very cost-effective for any team that was looking to trade for him. But also, he was kind of playing out over his skis a little bit. He's been the Re- the Reds' best hitter. He just hit his mm-hmm. 20 home, 20th home run the other day. He's never hit 20 in his career. So he's he's been way better than his career would say. And the Reds did this a few years back whenever they had Dan Straley at the time. Dan Straley pitched very well for them, and they traded him for Luis Castillo. And we saw how that worked out for the Reds. So they trade him for this uh, 18-year-old shortstop named Victor Acosta from the San Diego Padres. It was an international free agent signing. uh, The Padres signed him for a $1.2 million bonus in the signing pool. So that in and of itself tells you that there's talent there. There are people that are excited about him. They spent that much of their international pool on him. So I I think that the Reds have really done a good job of adding not only quantity of talent, because you look at the Castillo, the Mali, and the Drury deal, they add eight prospects for three guys, but they're also dudes that you can be excited about for Mm -hmm. this long-term future of the Reds. And what does it say about the future? I mean, obviously these are young guys, so we aren't going to see them right away, but if you're hoping not for a full rebuild, is this, you know, a couple of year project, hopefully that we'll see some, some, some prospects up in the big leagues by then. Yeah, this is kind of following along with what general manager Nick crawl said early on in the year. And it's a statement that has been maligned much for part of it is that he said he wants to eliminate 
peaks and valleys. Now, of course, you mm-hmm. want to peak. You want to have good points. But he doesn't want to have these periods of just non-competition. And in order to do that, you have to not only have guys who are ready to come up this year and next year, you've also got to have guys that are ready three, four, five years down the road. And the Reds kind of had a couple of guys in that realm, but not a ton in their mm-hmm. farm system. Their, far- their farm system has been fringe top 10 kind of middle of the league for the last few years. So any sort of rebuild was going to require the Reds to relinquish some top flight major league baseball talent for guys that have high upside that probably still have a few years of development left. Obviously, Victor Acosta being an 18 year old shortstop, plenty of time uh, to Mm -hmm. develop for him. He's not going to be ready anytime soon. But when you look at these kinds of moves that Nick crawl made, He's staying true to his word, and he's showing that the Reds have a plan, which is not really something I can say that I know they've had throughout, really, my entire lifetime as a Reds fan. All right, we got about an hour left at this point until the trade deadline. Are they done making moves? Is the fire sale over, or is there someone else that's headed out of town? There, There's a couple of names left that I think the Reds could deal. I don't necessarily think they're going to be super impactful deals, but they have guys like Donovan Solano on a one-year deal. They have Kyle Farmer, who has plenty of years of control left and is a clubhouse-type dude, so they could see an interesting return for him if uh, teams want to bite. They've also caught a, you know, they got a couple of pitchers that they might get, you know, a, a project type prospect back, but I'm not expecting any sort of really impactful deals like we've seen with Tyler Malley and Luis Castillo. All right. The Reds are selling everything off, Jeff. Thank you for enlightening us on this. And hopefully we won't talk to you again today because hopefully they'll keep who they got at this point. <laughs> hopefully so. Thanks, Kim.